Romans chapter 1. I said I'd go back there, and I'm actually going to flip over there this time. Because I do want to just catch this little thing here. This is the idea of God giving them over. Starting in verse 18, Romans 1, 18 says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who, what do these men do? Suppress the truth. They don't want to hear the truth. Could you imagine a nation like that? Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his attribute, invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Did you know that you can't have a painting without a painter? You can't have a building without an architect and a builder. And yet, most of the world today wants to say we have a creation without a creator. And if you do some honest research, which they never gave us back in school, if you do some honest research, go study the history of evolution. Because if you really read about the first people who started promoting it, and you get direct quotes from these guys, we believe these things because the alternative is unthinkable to us. That was creation. They did not want God. And so we have to fix this problem. Creation reveals a creator. So we need to find an alternative here. And because, they all, but because although they knew God, deep down everyone does, there are no atheists, they did not glorify him as God, nor were they thankful, but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened, professing to be wise, because they're so smart, these people, <laughs> they became fools. And they changed the glory of the incorruptible God into the image made like corruptible man, and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness and the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, and they worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed more forever. Amen. We already read that, but the lie. It's funny that there's a definite article here. There's the lie. What is the lie? Well, I already told you this idea it's just speaking of it here. It seems that it's the idea of exchanging the creator God for worshiping animals and other things that came to be. And this was kind of a fun little study I did this last week on, you know, evolution. How long has the theory been around? Now, many might think 19th, 18th century, 1700s, 1800s. All right, how about like 4,000 years? Because if you start studying Satan takes an old thing and gives it a new twist. The lies found in the cults today are the same lies from a long time ago, right? They just got new spins and faces on them. Whether it's the Mormons or the Jehovah's Witnesses or whatever else, it's a lot of the same lies with a new face. Hinduism is about as old as Abraham, 2000 BC, and they believe in reincarnation. And now, if you actually study this in depth, most Hindus today probably wouldn't even actually say they believe this, but if you start studying the roots in some of their own writings, you know, if you're really bad, you, you can actually go down. They believe that not only can reincarnation control is animals, but it's plant, animal, mineral. It's God's in all of it. And, and so if you're a really good rock, you can become a plant. And if you're a really good plant, you can become a worm. And if you're a really good worm, you can turn into a fish if you're a good fish, you can turn into a frog. If you're a good frog, you turn into a T-Rex, and from a T-Rex into a chicken, right? I mean, that's, that's the process. But it really is. It's been around for 4,000 years that one thing will turn into another over time and slowly progress into a greater state. This is a 4,000-year-old thought. It's not new. It's just got a new face, a little more civilized. It fits well in the modern thing. Now, here's the thing. Uh, remember, remember earlier I talked about people can believe different things, and that's totally cool with me. Creation's right on that list. It's like, whatever. I'm not going to stress it with some people. But the hard part for me is the Bible starts getting chunky when I try and fit that in here. And as I do an honest assessment of what's going on in the world around me, it testifies of a creator. Now, get this. This nation... That was blessed. I'm going to tie Romans 1 now back with our Ezekiel 16. They were blessed by God. They were favored of God. A nation that God was choosing to, to bless and work through. But they became too affluent, too powerful, too full of themselves. And they began turning to everything else instead of God. And God begins to bring judgment on them. 
And here we read in Romans 1 about how he gives them up. When they start worshiping these other things and they choose to exchange the truth of God for the lie, worshiping and serving the creature rather than the creator. Listen, verse 26 of Romans 1. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lust for one another, men with men, committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do things which are not fitting. And the, the last few verses just lists off a ton of stuff, right? Look at Sodom again, what we just read in Ezekiel 16. Sodom was full of pride and affluence and idleness. And eventually... What do we see? Because you know, when we, people think of the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, everyone always thinks, of course, of her, here's all these men trying to rape the angels. But again, that wasn't where things started. But it seems as if God gave them up to a debased mind. And this is actually where it says it goes. And it, it actually seems like the Bible teaches, and I'd be happy to sit down with you and we can dig into this more together. I remember Chuck Missler being the first guy I ever say this, that this idea of actually a massive wave of acceptance of homosexuality is like a judgment of God. I'm letting go. People want to chase after things. This is like we started at the beginning of the chapter. I said, God just finally says, fine, if you want this stuff, I'm just going to stop holding back. I've been trying to restrain. I'm getting tired of holding the reins. So if you guys want it, here you go. And then all of a sudden you see, whoo, everything begins to ramp up. Why? Because God's pulled back his restraint. I tried long enough trying to keep you guys at bay, but you really wanted this, so I let you have it. All right, I got to quickly wrap this up here. 